Hello everyone and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption. Hola, señor. <laughs> hey gringo. Mr. Ricketts, come on in. Sit down and have yourself a drink. Sure. Say, any word of Javier Escuela? Uh, no, nothing yet. Say, why are you after him anyway? We're old friends. We was kind of educated together. <laughs> so what is this, some kind of high school reunion sort of thing? Something like that. Well, well, you've killed people. You lived the life. <sighs> that I have. And I tried to stop. I mean, I don't know. I tried to go straight. I did. I left the gang after the gang left me. Left me to die after I'd been shot. They'd all gone crazy anyhow. Our old leader, a fella you probably heard of. Anyway, he more or less lost his mind, went and shot a bunch of people unfair-like. I got shot in a robbery. They left me, and I left them. <laughs> well, that's how it goes. <laughs> <clears throat> Already had me a woman, got me a farm, then I got me more trouble. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> been sent to track down the men I used to run with. Track them, kill them. Well, if you don't, someone else will. There's no escape. Look at me, I spent 25 years killing men. <laughs> Look at me now, sitting around here like some low-rent would-be messiah. <laughs> We're relics. Come on, have yourself another drink and let's wallow in a little self-pity. Sounds like a plan. Your health. Mr. Ricketts, Mr. Ricketts, thank the Lord I have found you. And you, Mr. Marston. Will you sit down? You all right? I'm well, sir. But Allende is sending more men to the death. Prisoners who have not been tried. A prominent writer, Castilla, and a local official whose only crime was not putting the small holders on the street when they were late with taxes. Writers and government officials. For once, I agree with Allende. Some men need to be killed. Mr. Ricketts! <sighs> I was just joking. Where are they? Out near Escalera. Let's hang up our self-pity and go shoot ourselves some bad guys. You're gonna be all right. Thank you. Both of you. All right, here we go again. Go shoot some bad guys indeed. Yeah! No rush. I'm sure they'll hold the executions till we get there. Easy now. Luisa was pretty shaken up. She's angry. This war is getting dirtier by the day. People are being executed for just having an opinion. Melinda seems to have more enemies by the day. Perhaps you would know. Rumor has it you've been making all kinds of new friends. I don't pay much attention to rumors. Just be careful, John. Keep jumping from one side of the fence to the other. You might just get impaled on it. I have to find these two men. With respect, how I do it is no concern of yours. Choose your tone wisely, partner. Remember who you're talking to. How could I ever forget? And who are you, John Marston? Apart from a rat feeding every other hand he can find, my name means something. All you've done is kill a few peasants, and the only real outlaw you've taken on dropped you like a bad habit. Now, I'd politely ask you to watch your tone, Rick. All I'm saying is, maybe there's a reason why people around here don't want to talk. You must miss your family. It's the only thing that keeps me going. You know, you remind me a lot of myself. How I used to be. Stubborn and angry. You ain't changed all that much. I always thought I'd... Do you see that? Prison wagons. That must be them. Come on! See if you can take control of that first wagon. On it. And yeah, the conversation for some reason cut out again. Or cut off at the end. 
Not sure why, but there we go. Okay, so that is the first wagon handled, but of course we still have some of these friends here that we have to take down. Also that whole dialogue where Ricketts accuses John of fence hopping. Yeah, that happens even if you have actually not done the first mission or any missions for the army. Which I actually technically had not at this point. This is slightly out of sequence. I did this before the train mission. But I figured it would not make all that much sense that way, so I just decided to swap them around. And of course we also heard in the cutscene, we heard some of John's backstory as he used to run with the gang and then got shot in a robbery and was abandoned and then left to go straight. Of course we will be seeing all of that in Red Dead Redemption 2 in great detail. And of course we will be getting some more backstory in this game as well, but, but yeah, if you really want to see how the gang went insane or how their leader went, went nuts. Yeah, that's all in RDR 2. So now what we have to do here is take this, these prisoners across the bridge to New Austin. Of course we blew up the, um, well, technically we didn't at this point because, well, as I said earlier, but yeah, even after you blow that bridge up, the connecting bridge between Mexico and the US, you'll still have this one, so you can get across if you want. There isn't really much reason to do so, but, you know. A bit of resistance here on the US side, some fire bottles being thrown at us. Well, I guess we're not technically on the US side yet, but, but it doesn't matter. Some fellas out rafting with a barrel of TNT, so you know how that goes. from here. I know you got other matters to attend to. It's been nice riding with you, Mr. Ricketts. <laughs> and you too. You took me back to another time. Talk to Louisa. She'll help you, and she's well connected in that other land. I hope you find what you're looking for, Marston. You know what I'm looking for. <laughs> if you say so, Marston. If you say so. And as we say goodbye to Landon Ricketts, well, we still have to deal with the fact that we really have not gotten any closer to finding the men that we are looking for. We could go talk to Luisa, but before we do anything, let's just go ahead and, and take care of some of these side stuff that we have here in Mexico. So we had a treasure map pointing us at a rock that looked kind of like that, and... You can just about see the pile of rocks there, there on top of it, so... So let's make our way up. This is pretty close to the, um, the safe house that we tried to go to when we first reached Mexico. And were chased off by a pack of wolves. 
We can see the safe house there on the or the icon there on the minimap. That is actually the shack that Irish apparently uses when he's in Mexico. Come on, John, you can do it. John? There we go. Now this is more like it. Another gold bar and another treasure map for our troubles. We still haven't been selling any of the gold bars. We could safely start selling them at this point, I think. We're not gonna be getting any more, well, any more cash from selling stuff. We are pretty much maxed out on that front, I believe. I don't think your fame level actually affects that in any way. And that does not have a location either, but... But we know where that is. That is the Ojo del Diablo right right outside Chuparosa, so so we'll just make our way over there. Actually before we do we go and pick some flowers. Some prickly pear here. Which gets us to rank 4 survivalist. So then the next one we have to get is seven woolly blue curls. The number of plants that you have to collect for each of these ranks, it increases all the time. So next one I think is eight or or something thereabouts. But here we are at the Ojo del Diablo and we'll just have to find the, the spot the treasure is hidden. Now we got these two ledges here, one on each side, so one of them doesn't have anything as far as I can remember. Might have been a chest there or something, but nothing important. Of course I went the wrong way at first. Because that is how I roll. But this should be the correct side, and yes, we can see the the rocks up ahead. Honestly, I'm not that sure why I'm not selling these gold bars, because... Because I'm not really saving them for any any higher purpose or anything like that. And the next treasure appears to be near a rock that looks like a Sega 32X. I don't recall off the top of my head where that is, but, but we'll see it pretty soon. So then we'll pick some more flowers. That's the flower. Here are the woolly blue curls that we need, or the last one that we need. Let's go. Also some coyotes hooting and hollering around, but we don't need to care about them. And reaching survivalist rank 5 increases the amount of time that the survivalist map's effect lasts. So we can now see the... 
the plants on the on the minimap for double the amount of time. I don't remember exactly what the time limit actually is, but it's something like 10 or 15 minutes. Might be more, I don't know. Also, there was the butterfly weed that we needed for rank 6. And I believe that takes care of all the survivalist challenges in Mexico. Just take a quick look here in the journal. Yeah, the next is 10 hummingbird sage which are in and around tall trees, which is very far from here. So that's gonna be something for later. But right now, let's go back to see the army and and find out if they have anything or any new information for us. Or any more work for us, I suppose. Careful there, friend. Eres Yoron Maricón. Me das asco. Hablas lealtad, pero eres transparente. Estarás aplaudiendo cuando mi cabeza está en pelado, ¿verdad? No, 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 mi excelencia. Mis hombres y yo estamos trabajando noche y día por su honor. ¿Honor? ¿Qué eres, un muchacho? Jovencito, sin vergüenza. ¿Qué diablo es este cabrón? That's, that's the man who helped us defeat Reyes. The man I spoke to you of. <laughs> Afrento, México. Hello, sir. Hola, gringo. So you are the bounty hunter, huh? Have you found your prey yet? No, sir. Ah, perhaps you come to hunt me, huh? Your country loves to make trouble in mine. Perhaps, but it isn't so. Ah, perhaps I should tie you to a horse and let it drag you around town. Or let the dogs fight you, huh? <laughs> then see what you say. I'd say the same thing. I'm here to bring two men to justice, nothing more. Your politics or ideas of entertainment are not my concern. Yeah, I suppose not. Pero son tuyos. Sinceramente espero que me encontraste alguna compañía más interesante que ese bruja que me traíste anoche. Let me ask you this, sir. Do you know anything of the men I'm looking for? Escuela is from this province. His uh, father was a borracho, a drunk who worked as a laborer on land cultivated by my uncle. Men like that are natural allies for Reyes. My people have lived and worked here for a hundred years. We brought civilization. And these people, these fucking monkeys, despise us. We brought them God! And they turned their back on him. Now I fight to help them from themselves, to save them from themselves. I see in their faces that they would kill me if they could. <laughs> They she only a tyrant. That is the way it is. These people need a ruler. Well, sorry to hear that. Sorry? Why be sorry? It is a way of mankind. A fight between two forces. Que sara sara. What will be, will be. But I know one thing, Senor Marston. Force, <laughs> force must be used if you are to have your own way. I'm sure. Now. Perhaps you can uh, do me a favor while I find these men for you. After we find the men, then I'll help in any way I can. Ah, da, 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 da. You are in no position to negotiate. Now, por favor, a bunch of these idiots men are fighting at Tesoro Azul. Now, you head there and you lend your support. Baboso, ¿cuántas veces voy a decirte? No ponga detrás de mí. ¿Qué eres, cabrón? No está mi sombra. Vaya. I sent some men ahead. We will meet them there. Come on. So I finally met your great leader. He certainly lives up to his reputation. What would you know about leadership? 
Only that most can't handle power. And this isn't to criticize power when you have never had it yourself. Maybe it is because you have never been in the presence of a strong man before. I have seen the pictures of your country in the newspapers. Men printing and decorating themselves like women. Vanity is the legacy the British left behind. Look, I don't know the fella. Just saying. That's how he treats his own men. Coronel Allende controls any situation he's in because he knows that situation can never be allowed to control him. It is what a leader must do. And in any case, you had not noticed, we're fighting a war. We're all under a lot of pressure. Pressure to find young girls? The Coronel needs recreation like everyone else. He does not have time to court women. He's waging a war on ignorance and is impatient for victory. He's trying to inspire wisdom in those more stupid than himself. Our men left some time ago. We're already late. Come on, let's see if you can ride. Oh, I can ride all right. So yeah, of course we are being sent on an errand because that is how this works. So, I guess we ain't taking any prisoners then. Traitors will be made to suffer. Show that we will not tolerate the rebellion any longer. They're animals. We will slaughter them accordingly. You suppress me, animals! Why are you stopping? Desanta! ¿Por qué tardaste tanto? ¿Y quién es este gringo? Ostavio, favor! Cada hombre ayuda! I hope you fight better than this little girl, gringo! Come! Let's have some fun! Right. Seems pretty quiet so far. Whoops. That's probably not good. And I'm really glad I took that medicine because that would have killed us. Okay, let's just regroup here. That was a little bit unfortunate, but there we go. That's why you don't take cover behind a box that has a a lantern on top. Obviously we are going to get all these rebels just popping out of all of the buildings. This can be a fairly difficult mission if you, well at least if you screw up like I did there early on. But you know, this is another one of those missions where you kind of get enemies coming in from all sides, so not sure where that guy was going, but... But who cares? But it seems like we are just about done. Just this guy up here. Who's next? I heard the little horse crying in that house over there. <laughs> Remember, nobody takes them before Allende. We did all this just to get women for Allende? <laughs> no, that's just a bonus. This village is riddled with rebels. Make sure they don't have homes to come back to. There are fire bottles over there. Use them to burn down some of these houses. And what makes you think I'd do that? You want to find Javier Escuela, don't you? Done. You're helping Mexico. Vámonos, muchachos. Buen trabajo. Yo me quedo aquí para vigilar el gringo, Capitán de Santa. Get the fire bottles. It is time to finish what now my Spanish is not all that great, but I'm pretty sure the other um, military captain there just said that the Santa should keep an eye on the gringo. Or us, obviously. Of course John doesn't understand it because he doesn't speak a lick of Spanish. So yeah, we are being watched.
And I gotta say, this is not exactly our finest hour, I would say. I realize that John does want to just get his job done, so he can get back to his, back to his family, but... But yeah, this is probably not our proudest moment. Isn't that beautiful? You really are pathetic. You need to relax. Come back to the villa and sample some of the new girls before they spoil. 